Hi, it's Dave of Roman Astro. You can see a little bit of glare of the setting sun, or at least the sun will be setting here shortly. And tonight is going to be part of the first light of my new telescope, my Apertura 75Q. Now, as many of you probably know, I had issues with my AstroTech 80 EDT. And even though I really enjoyed the scope, uh, she had issues with getting good bright round stars. And so finally, in frustration, and because I didn't want to lose any more of the imaging season in terms of nebula, because galaxy season is around the corner here, um, I decided to go ahead and replace it. And so I got the Apertura 75Q. Now, this is a quintuplet. It's made by Sharpstar. So it's actually on the, on the uh, dew shield here. Excuse me, somebody's got some extra testosterone that they feel that they need to um, get out of their system. So anyways, it's produced by Sharpstar for High Point Scientific. So it's Petsville design. It's a quintuplet, uh, four or five millimeter uh, focal length, um, f5.4 and 75 millimeter diameter uh, lens objective. Um, and because it's a Petsville design, it does not require a field flattener, which I'm really thankful for, because I've always struggled with my back focus, and now I don't have to worry about my back focus. What's interesting about this scope is that from Sharpstar, or from High Point Scientific, AKA Sharp Star. It comes with a Las Mandy plate, which has all these mount holes and it has all these um, cutouts. So basically it's a very lightweight Las Mandy plate. It's probably the lightest Las Mandy plate I've ever held. Um, as you can see the plate here, it's pretty much been hollowed out so that it's not a very heavy plate. It's designed to be light. And so, yeah, tonight is gonna to be first light for this guy. We'll do a couple nights, hopefully, on the, what am I shooting? The horse head. I'm gonna shoot the horse head nebula on Bernard 33. Okay, I have processed my images of the Horsehead Nebula, um, IC434. I only managed to get about 11 and a half to 12 hours worth of data. I've had a lot of issues with clouds. It was a cloudy December, and so December was pretty much a wash. And going into January, it's been pretty cloudy ever since. It's really kind of interesting in that uh, it'll be clear during the daytime and then the clouds roll in at night. Go figure. Uh, tonight's supposed to be clear and I'll finish up the Orion Nebula, which I'm testing the scope out on. And if I have the opportunity in the next couple days, I'll probably go back and try to capture more data of the horse head. I generally tend to like to get anywhere between 18 to 24 hours. So what I've done is I basically cropped these images and that's all that I've done. So this is the hydrogen alpha um, stacked image that came out of uh, Astro Pixel Processor. And you can see that it looks fairly clean. The stars look good. 
I don't see any major issues. The bright stars look really good. I don't see any pinched optics, which has been the bane of my existence. And so hydrogen looks good. And then the sulfur sub, a little noisier, but I would expect that. Uh, sulfur and oxygen, for whatever reason, tend to be pretty noisy. And the stars look good. At least at this view here, they look pretty good. And then into the oxygen. And again, uh, not much oxygen signal. There's a little bit of signal down here in the flame. But the stars look pretty decent, at least at this view. Uh, yeah, they look pretty decent. So what I decided to do was to go through and create um, aberration inspector so that I can look at the edges and the middles parts of the image. And to do that, it's really easy. You just go into script and you go into image analysis. Your first option there is going to be aberration inspector. And so here's the aberration inspector for hydrogen. And I did this so I can get a sense as to what the stars look like, especially in the corners. And to be honest with you, the stars look just fine. The stars are as I would expect them to be. They're nice and round. They don't seem to be a problem. They're nice and round, and yeah, I'm pretty happy. So that's hydrogen, and then in sulfur, they have the same kind of look. They're very round, and we don't seem to have any issues with stars, at least none that I can see. The one place where there were issues with stars was the oxygen filter and you can see that here and this so if we are to expand these stars you'll notice that in the corners and again I think it's more related to the filter than it is to the telescope because I did not see this with the other two filters the hydrogen and the sulfur the stars look just fine but you can see it's just a slight bit of bloating and elongation which is really kind of odd so you can see it here just slightly slightly elongated it really looks almost like coma over here but again I think it's related more to the filter than it is to the telescope because if I come here to hydrogen let's get this over here loaded up and then let's get these to match. You can see that the hydrogen stars look much nicer. And this is before I've done any blur exterminator or anything like that. All that I've done is just crop these images and that's and put them through Graxpert, but that's pretty much it. And you can tell here that um, the oxygen is more bloated, which I would expect, and I suspect that that's part of what the artifacting is here, is that it's really due to the filter, because I don't see really the same thing in the hydrogen. Now, what I did then afterwards was these sets of images here, I ran through Blur Exterminator, um, looking to see if whether or not the stars would come out better than what they did uh, in the original images. And I think that they did. I think that um, Blur Exterminator was able to compensate for the filters because the filters, I think, are was having issues. So if we come over here, yeah, see, the stars look much better. And so I'm much happier with that. And kind of the issues that I guess Blur Exterminator uh, works with is getting rid of some of those misshapen stars and you can see that the stars look much nicer.
So, the Oxygen 3 filters, they generally tend to produce halos and all kinds of funky things. Now, these are 3 nanometer bandpass Oxygen 3s. They come from Antlia. I think they are the Antlia Pro 5 series or something like that. I'd have to go and check. They're relatively new filters, and if that's all that I'm getting, I'm pretty happy. Processed everything, and how about the images? So the first image that I'm going to show you is my hydrogen alpha image. There we go. I'm an old time photographer. I've been doing photography for quite some time now. And when I first learned photography way back when I was a teenager, I cut my teeth on black and white. And so black and white is still for me the purest form of photography. But here is the hydrogen alpha. And what I love is that even though I only captured about four and a half hours of uh, hydrogen alpha, I still got amazing amount of detail. And I think part of that's because of the speed of the scope. Now it's not an F4, it's not an F2.8, it's only an F5.4 but it is faster than both the F7 scope that I had and the F6 scope. So being just a little bit faster means that I can capture a little bit more data, which means more detail. Now, my goal is to go back once the clouds disperse and to capture some more of this gorgeous data because I know that there's more detail down in this bottom part down in here I know that there's a lot more detail down there that I can capture and I know that there's more detail up here at the top that I can capture and so I'm looking forward to getting more data that I can then compile with this and see where I can end up taking the image the other two that I did are different color palettes so you can see here one is HOO color palette which is if you don't see the horse head in natural color you'll often will see it in HOO and so I did the HOO and I think it turned out really nice uh, it has the nice red of the hydrogen alpha what's interesting is that you don't see as much detail down here at the bottom you see some of the wispiness of the clouds but not as much detail as you can see when you're looking at the hydrogen alpha sub just by itself but still an amazing amount of detail here a lot of nice detail here in the glass in the gas clouds come down here and there's nice detail down here and this swirling it looks like a cloud bank it's absolutely gorgeous and so this is my HOO image that I put together and then last but not least because you rarely ever see the horse head as anything other than either natural color or HOO, I decided to do it as SHO color palette. So you can see it here. And again, I wish I had more detail down here at the bottom of the frame. And I think that I just need some more integration time. So I'm looking to get maybe another evening or two of some integration time so i'll have about 24 hours of total integration time rather than the 11 and a half to 12 that i've got now but this is a beautiful image i i just love it i think this is gorgeous so so the question what do i think about the telescope well i love it i think it's a great scope it's really um, lightweight it's got beautiful color uh, it's that purplish kind of color uh, as my wife reminds me purple is an evening color so I think that that's probably why High Point Scientific asked Sharp Star to paint it in probably a purplish color because well it's an evening color the optics are fantastic it's a pets full design so I don't have to worry about back focus the stars come out great. I've had so many issues with stars in the past year or so that it's a was it was just it was just wonderful not to have to look at the stars and say, oh no, yet more pinched optics. Or oh no, there's more tilt. 
because I know when I try to achieve the 55 millimeter back, back focus distances, I have to put in, um, you know, um, spacers and, and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes the spacers are not engineered well. And so you'll end up introducing a little bit of tilt into your uh, image train. And then you have to try to figure out where the tilt's coming from and to fix it. And it's been a real pleasure not having to do all of that, but to just have images come out, which are really nice images to have to work with is fantastic. I love it. It's a great scope. I know that High Point Scientific has had it on sale now for a little bit because they're introducing it. It's worthy of your evaluation. And I really like that scope and I can't wait to see what kind of images that I can produce with it. If you thought that this was helpful in any way, uh, please feel free to like the video and subscribe. And oh yeah, if you have any questions about the scope, I'm more than happy to answer them. Just go ahead and put your questions down there in the comments and I will do the best that I can to answer them. And until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.